a special thank you to the awesome people who support and fund this channel, and a special thank you to you, the viewer, who watch this cringy stuff. So I'm giving my take on uh, a Netflix documentary that I saw recently, Turning Point for the Bomb in the Cold War. So for the for most part, as a documentary, it does a good job hitting all the usual notes about the Cold War with uh, Adolf Hitler, Stalin, uh, Khrushchev, Gorbachev, and um, all that. And it's a pretty decent documentary. Um, they have cool people interviews and people who lived throughout that time. Uh, so on that section of the documentary, I tip my hat does do a pretty good job. But it's the last two episodes is where, 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 let me paint a picture. We're walking through the roads of historical accuracy. They're pointing out the crimes of the, like, Nazis and Stalin's regime. We're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good historical accuracy, covering of facts unbiasedly. And then we step in a giant pile of cow shit. And that cow shit is the blatant Western propaganda in the last two episodes so they gloss over the color they mentioned the color revolutions uh, but they don't cover the shit ukraine did with them like killing protesters and ringleaders um uh they don't cover the the attacks in crimea because in crimea i uh, during that time they had a protest where a whole bunch of ukrainian military went in there and they just fucking shot up people and murdered them in the streets um, they didn't touch on that. Uh, they mentioned Donetsk and Luhansk, but they don't mention how those people wanted to be independent from uh, Ukraine. And this is where the whole, I mean, in my humble opinion, where the Ukraine-Russia war kind of starts. You have Donetsk and Luhansk wanting to be their own, like, independent countries at the time. They later uh, join and uh, with the Russian, like, Federation and are annexed. Or and so they choose to be annexed. You know, as an American, it's not really my choice to dictate where countries and sections of countries like join and assign their allegiances to. I should have no right to dictate that. Um, so there's that, and of course, Putin moves into Crimea because of the shenanigans that Ukraine and the Ukrainian military did at that time. So uh, the West kind of like just cuts that out. They don't mention that at all. They don't mention Zelensky suspending elections. Um, which is funny because they're talking about, you know, that, oh, the elections in Russia. Well, at least they had elections, or the illusion of. So, Slinsky has, uh, suspended elections, so making him kind of de facto tyrant, if you ask me. Um, he's also persecuted Russian Orthodox Christians. The SBU has been known to torture people to death, assassinate, and disappear people, and throw them in prison till they die. Shout out Gonzalo Lira. Rest in peace, buddy. So... The last two episodes, they they totally don't cover that, and it's 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 so sad to see a documentary hit note note historical accuracy and hold nothing back on like even Nagasaki and Hiroshima. But the last two episodes basically got what you'd expect an anti-Trump bullshit message where oh Trump's not really uh he's kind of buddies. He's kind of a Putin respecter, and we don't deal with Putin respecters here. And if you vote for him, you're Russian Putin propagandist, buddy. It's pretty much it came out saying that. Um, and of course, in all reality, okay, the CIA fucks with people's elections across the world. We're talking India, we're talking Brazil, we're talking even in Russia and other parts of the world. The CIA has engaged with other people's elections just like the FSB engages with our elections and like does some fuckery maybe opens up some ads on facebook or has some russian bots um so with that like just because a foreign intelligence agency is fucking with a political parties like elections and stuff doesn't mean that that candidate is a servant and uh, ally to a foreign state but then again we're talking about netflix that was to be expected most of the stuff on Netflix is like hard left leaning woke bullshit, like a just cow shitting on your face. Um, so no, I wouldn't recommend this documentary just for those purposes. Um, I wouldn't even. There's other and better documentaries about the Cold War that you could watch without getting the um, political tea bag on your face, where they strap you down and dip their nuts on your face with this anti-Trump shit. 
Um, so, and of course, again, they glassed over the, the very real crimes and war crimes that Ukraine has committed. Uh, and so they gloss over that. They don't even mention it because Zelensky is a little angel that has done no wrong um, just because he wants to support and further the idealism of democracy. <laughs> so with that, I have to give uh, this documentary on Netflix a fail. Um, because even at the end of it, you know, you could have at least, you could have at least put a little bit of effort and elbow grease to at least pretend to have a unifying message with Americans. You could have at least said, oh, well, uh, it's time for us to work together and come to the, you know, you could have at least sugarcoated it like that, right? But no, it's by the end of it, it's just Trump derangement bullshit. And I got to give this documentary a fail for that. And it's sad. And of course, um, every episode they have a little, a little sprinkling of anti-Russian like propaganda and anti-Putin propaganda. Like you can be against Putin, but it's just crumbs, little crumbs of shit sprinkled on it, and some throughout the entire thing. So no, I wouldn't recommend watching this documentary. Um, again, like I said, there's better documentaries out there. Seek them out without bias and this horseshit Western propaganda.